This is the M5 Stamp C3 from M5 Stack. A bit of a confusing naming scheme, but this board is powered by the Espressive ESP32 C3, a microcontroller which is powered by the RISC-V instruction set architecture. The board features Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity and a whole host of other IoT-centric features. This is the first non-RP2040 board that we have covered on this channel, so I am looking forward to getting into this one. This board appears to be targeted towards IoT Edge devices with its Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity options, as well as industrial automation uses with some secure boot features and some heat resistance in the uh, plastic casing and the board itself. Welcome to a Learn Embedded Systems Microcontroller Review, where today we are looking at the M5 Stamp C3. But before we continue, I would like to thank this video's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a PCB manufacturer who can produce and assemble almost any PCB that you can think of, including standard multi-layer PCBs, flexible PCBs and even more. Their fast turnaround time means that they're a great choice for prototyping your projects. They offer surface mount and through hole assembly services. PCBWay also offer CNC services including 3D printing, CNC machining and injection moulding. So they really have every service that you need for your next project. New members get a £5 voucher when you sign up which can cover the cost of 10 two layer PCBs. Check out PCBWay by using the link in the video description. So let's start with the price of the Stamp C3. This board is available from a variety of retailers, but M5 Stack are selling this board directly for $6. They ship from China, however, which might not be suitable for most viewers. Luckily, there is a long list of worldwide distributors on their website, so you are most likely going to find one near you. For those like me in the UK, both the Pi Hut and Pi Moroni are selling this board for between £6 and £6.90 respectively. You can get this board in packs of five if you want, but I just got a single unit in what they call a mate version. In the single unit pack, we get lots of nice extras, including the Stamp C3 itself with a pre-installed case. We also get a hex key to remove this case if we want to, and we get a pinout sticker for the case as well. Finally, we get a variety of header pins. We get both male and female header pins, as well as some JST connectors or Grove connectors that we can solder on in place of some of the header pins. All of these extras are nice to see inclusions. Now let's take a closer look at the Stamp C3 and remove the case. I think this is more of a cover than a case, but oh well. Let's start with the Espressive ESP32 C3 chip that powers this board. This is a 32-bit RISC-V single core processor which runs at 160 megahertz. It has 384 kilobytes of ROM and 400 kilobytes of SRAM. There is also four megabytes of flash memory built in to the chip. In terms of interfaces, this chip supports three SPI, two UART, one I squared C, and one I squared S controller or controllers. There are two 12-bit analog to digital converters with up to six channels. There is also RSA 3072 based secure boot, as well as AES uh, 128 based flash encryption features, which would be really interesting for sort of the industrial automation or trying to make more secure projects. In terms of wireless connectivity, which was probably the main selling point of this board, there is 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi supporting 802.11 B, G and N protocols with data rates up to 150 megabytes per second. And with respect to Bluetooth, we get Bluetooth 5 low energy with data rates of 125, 500 kilobytes per second, as well as one and two megabytes per second. Both the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity share the same 3D antenna. Also present on the board, we have a USB-C connector, which is a nice inclusion at this price point of only around $6, six pounds, a micro USB connector would have been a little disappointing. Supporting the USB to ESP32 communication and vice versa, we have a CH9102 USB to TTL chip. There are two buttons. One is a reset button. The other is a user programmable button. There is also a, an RGB LED present on the board, 
which I will say gets really bright, like surprisingly bright. Uh, I don't know how much power it consumes. So that might be something interesting to measure. And that pretty much sums up the features of this board. There aren't many extras because I feel like the biggest features are the chip itself, the ESP chip itself, which can provide the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. But anyway, all of these features are packed into a package that measures a pretty compact 34 by 20 millimeters. It is about 4.6 millimeters tall, and these are the maximum dimensions, as in the case doesn't affect these, because the case sort of just fills in the gaps almost. And it weighs in at 3.8 grams. In terms of pinouts, there are 13 GPIO ports, which are labelled on the rear of the board, as well as um, the sticker, which is included for the cover or the case. Uh, that, sh that also labels the board pretty well. You will notice some small holes either side of the USB connector, and these are designed for the Grove or JST connectors that come in the package that I showed you earlier. There is one 3.3 volt output pin, as well as three 5 volt outputs, and there are four ground pins. And that just about sums up the pinout. In terms of programming this board, you do have a couple of options. You can use the Arduino IDE or Espressif's own ESP IDF. I will assume that most people watching this video will lean towards the Arduino IDE, so I'll cover that here. To get started, we need to install some additional boards by loading up the Arduino IDE, going to File, then Preferences, and in the Additional Boards option, copying and pasting the link to a JSON file that is available in the M5 Stack documentation page for the Stamp C3. Then we can hit OK and go to Tools, then Board Manager, then search for the M5 Stack package and hit Install. Once this has installed, uh, we can then select the board as Stamp C3. Make sure that you choose the correct COM port and you should be ready to go. We can also select lots of other settings and configurations such as CPU speed. You might have to install some USB drivers for the CH9102 chip. I didn't have to for some reason, but if you do then there are instructions in M5 Stack's documentation. Speaking of documentation, there is a fair amount. The board schematics are available, um, so it is better than some other boards that we have seen. The uh, C Studio Wio uh, RP2040 had almost no documentation, so this is a lot better. But it would have been nice to have seen a bit more information or maybe some examples for beginners to use to get started. So I think that just about covers this board. It's nice and simple, uh, nice and to the point. I think it's a great value board with good connectivity and features that make it a perfect choice for IoT projects. It is also interesting to use a RISC-V processor for those that might have not used one before. So for around $6 or £6, it is certainly worth considering in your applications. However, there are some other ESP32 boards out there that might not be RISC-V based, but are dual core with wireless connectivity that are more powerful. We are going to take a look at some other ESP32 powered boards in the future video, so make sure you are subscribed to keep up to date. Let me know your thoughts about this board, I am personally quite impressed. For those that regularly watch this channel, be sure to let us know down in the comments what you think about covering some chips other than the RP2040. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, have a nice day.